Hi folks, Wooden Boat Dan here. Just wanted to give you a heads up. The podcast you're about to listen to was recorded several years ago. So some of the phone numbers, email addresses, website, links, and time-sensitive information are no longer valid. Please keep that in mind as you listen. If you'd like to contact me, my email address is woodenboatdan at gmail.com. Thank you and enjoy the podcast. Welcome to Hooked on Wooden Boats weekly podcast episode number 80. I am your host, Dan Matson, a.k.a. Wooden Boat Dan. If you can't do it, nobody can, although there's a few people out there that think they can. And this is the world's first podcast fully dedicated to celebrating the art, craft, history, tradition, and romance, and don't forget the romance, of wooden boats all over the world. Welcome to the show today, folks. It's great to have you. You're in for another action-packed adventure of Hooked on wooden boats. Today's featured segment is an interview with Howard Rice, small boat adventurer. Uh, If you recall, or maybe you don't recall, I interviewed Howard last year. If you go to hookedonwoodenboats.com slash 039, you can listen to that interview where uh, we talked about uh, Howard's history with boating and some of the really cool things he's done, including sailing a canoe around Cape Horn and back. And uh, this interview with Howard is one that I did during the SCAMP camp in Port Townsend, Washington, a couple weeks ago. And on the interview, we talk about the SCAMP camp and the SCAMP and then some really cool stuff that Howard and a couple of his partners are doing. I guess you could call it virtual boat building or boat building online. But listen to the interview and you'll find out all about it. It's a pretty cool deal where you can build a boat remotely with the assistance of Howard and a couple of his partners. Well, this past weekend, I started working on getting my shop unpacked, which is a three-car garage. And I'm not even close to the point where I can work on my canoe and finish it, which is just the varnishing. Not to mention the fact that there's no heat in the garage and it's been like 40 to 45 degrees in the garage just about every day (laughs) because the garage is kind of a uh, part of it sits underground, you could say. So it's kind of like insulated from the sun coming out. So anyway, I will be working on that, though, getting that organized. I'm kind of excited about it and looking forward to finishing the canoe and starting the scamp. I would like to give a shout out to our new subscribers to the Hooked on Wooden Boats monthly electronic newsletter. Todd Blankenship and Tom Buckley, welcome to the podcast, guys. Great to have you on board. For those of you that aren't subscribed, shame on you. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) You need to subscribe, though, seriously. Uh, This is a letter I send out almost monthly. And I just talk about what I'm up to with Hooked on Wooden Boats, share some resources, talk about what's new with um, wooden boats and fun stuff like that. No pressure. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I would encourage you to sign up. You can go to hookedonwoodenboats.com slash subscribe. And give me your first and last name, email address, and you're in like Flint. I wonder who Flint was anyway. Why do people say that? Okay, we're not going to go there. So thanks for signing up, guys. Great to have you on board. Last week, I did send out the March electronic newsletter. E-newsletter, I guess, is a better way to say it. And I encourage people to send me an email and talk about how they're getting in the wooden boat game or how they're in the game. And I'd like to read one response that I got from Steve Sigma. Steve, when I hear the name Steve Sigma, I think of Jack Sigma, who was a uh, center for the Seattle Supersonics in the 70s when they won the championship. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Not that many Sigmas around. Jack was like 6'11 and a half. I think he was 6'11 and a half. He was a really good, solid uh, center for the Supersonics. Anyway, let's read the email here. Hang on a second. I'll pull it up. Okay, here's what Steve has to say. 
Dan, I guess you might say I'm still in the game. I have attached pictures of the kayak I'm building this winter. I ordered the Kiska plans in November 2012 from Orca Canoes and Kayaks Limited in Coquitlam, BC, Canada. This is my second wooden boat build. You may recall my email about the accident and subsequent repairs I had to do on my 14-foot power dinghy Susie B from your listener feedback section on Hooked on Wooden Boats, episode 35. So if you go back to episode 35, there's a picture of Steve's first build there, which is a really gorgeous boat that's completely varnished the hull and everything. So I would encourage you to check that out. So then Steve goes on to say, Work began on the Kiska kayak right after Thanksgiving with cutting and machining strips in red cedar, Sitka spruce, and cherry. There is a ways to go yet, but I hope to see if it floats before the end of the summer. I hate to set a goal for completion for a completion date because I don't want to have to make as many excuses as you have had to do with your lap straight canoe. Ha ha ha. Finish it already. <laughs> Okay, I get the hint, Steve. Then he goes on, It is hard to describe the enjoyment and sense of accomplishment that building a wooden boat gives me. I agree with you when you say, Something magical happens when I am in my workshop building a new project or on the water in a wood boat, listening to the acoustic effect of water against the hull. It's a peaceful, happy sound like putting your ear to the body of an acoustic guitar. I really enjoy your podcast, with each new episode being a highlight of my week. Keep the bright side up and the barnacled side down. This is Steve, over and out. Thanks, Steve, for that kind email. That was really awesome. And I'm actually going to put a a picture of your kayak build on the website this week with episode number 80. So check it out, folks, when you get a chance. And if you get a chance, shoot me an email, would you? Dan at hookedonwoodenboats.com. So as you may already know by now, this podcast is all about encouraging people to get in the game, the wooden boat game that is, and there's tons of ways to do it. I've talked about them before. You can build a boat, which takes a fair amount of time, or you can buy one, which takes some money, or you can rent one, which takes a couple bucks and a few hours, or you can go out on a boat with a friend, or go to a local wooden boat school, or go to your local marina and just look for wooden boats or buy a wooden boat magazine, or buy three or four pieces of wood and visualize how they could become a boat in your mind. (laughs) Lots of ways to do it, folks. It's fun stuff. Seriously, I have a blast doing this, and I would encourage you to get in the game also. And here in the Pacific Northwest, we're coming into the wooden boat festival and fair and exposition season. And so that's pretty cool kind of April through September or May through September is when there's some really cool shows in the area and you probably have some in your area too so I would encourage you to check those out. Okay we're going to move on now to the interview with Howard Rice. Uh, It's a fascinating interview so take it away Howard. Okay it is March 15th 2013. I'm sitting with Howard Rice in Port Townsend, Washington. Howard welcome to the podcast. Well, Dan, it's great to see you again. Yeah, it's good. You've been on a couple times, and it's always fun to talk to you. And uh, right now, we're nearing the end of a scamp camp here at the Northwest Maritime Center. So uh, give me a little update on the scamp camp, Howard, that's happening right now. Well, great, Dan. Um, As I said, it's good to see you again. And uh, for for context, for folks who are online, uh, you and I are sitting out on the, the back apron of the Maritime Center and you get to look at the building. I'm looking at this gorgeous scene. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. <laughs> so thank you. It's always a pleasure to have you drag me to places like this. <laughs> um, it's a it's a wonderful thing for me to be back in Port Townsend. It's sort of become a second home. Uh, I flew in from uh, Japan and Micronesia to uh, hook up with uh, my three counterparts here to uh, teach Scamp Camp 3, which is a follow-on to a Scamp Camp that I instructed in October in the Great Lakes. So we're now at the 10th day of scamp camp which is the last day and uh, as you notice we were just in the shop uh, bending in carlins in a boat 
and yeah. uh, folks will drive away today or tomorrow uh, with their boats uh, ready for the final completion steps. Mm -hmm. Very cool. How many students are in this uh, class? Are we have six boats on uh, for this this camp. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, we've learned a lot in the process of holding the first camp camp where we had ten boats and thirteen students in October. Um, I elected to limit the number of uh, builders to five boats, which was very wise in many ways. Um, it, it just easier to manage, and and so this time we have six, and it seems like a really good number, mm. which uh, is really a it should be a whistle people should hear because Scamp Camp number four is filling up, and that's coming in August, so there might not be a ten boat build again. There might be. But okay. it, we seem to feel that the smaller number, we have six students, and in the room here we have four instructors and two highly qualified assistants. So it's really a one-to-one -one in most cases, yeah. uh, instructor to student. Very cool. So six new boats being built, and the next camp is in Port Townsend in August? The next camp is in Port Townsend in August. Yeah. Um, I've had the pleasure now of having my hand in 21 scamps have you really? being built, and uh, so I'll be approaching 30 uh, come August. Yeah, so you've got two kits yourself that you're yes, building. I, yes, I How do. How are those coming along? Number three, I own Scamp number two and number three. Um, number two is not built yet, uh, and it might sound odd that I have two of these, uh, but I'll just give you a brief snippet of why that came about. Number three is at the stage of uh, all the Scamps that come out of Scamp Camp. I actually constructed that boat alongside the builders in the build in uh, the Great Lakes. So uh, it rolled out and coated, completely encapsulated, uh, the deck tacked down, it's ready to finish. <clears throat> I'm staying on in the States uh, for a short period of time before I head back to the Pacific, uh, and I'll be finishing that boat starting somewhere about April 5th and pushing it for a uh, small craft academy fleet cruise in the Great Lakes North Channel uh, in July. Oh, okay. And that'll be fully tented in with all the bells and whistles uh, ready to go as a micro cruiser. Okay. Scamp and it all customized for your what you want to do with it. Well, your... it's really going to, you know, customized is a very important <laughs> question. <laughs> it's easy for folks to get excited about their boats yeah. and and start over engineering things and yeah. doubling up right. and making fillets too big but the the design as uh, josh colvin and craig wagner and john wellsford conceived it and certainly as john rendered it is perfectly acceptable the yeah, way it is right. so uh, the scamp you see off to your right uh, scamp number one mm -hmm. is what i consider the standard scamp yeah. it is the prototype a few little things have been tweaked and refined but my scamp number three is straight up standard boat yeah um, that's a great boat yeah. Uh, there are a few little things that are required for uh, tenting it in, but the design is the design and it stands as it does. Number yeah. two will be quite different. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is a boat that, quite different meaning when you look at it, it'll look like a scamp because it is. But when you get closer, it's being set up for an ocean passage. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So it'll be a little bit different There'll because it has to be. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So I was thinking of customization versus modification <laughs> when I'm thinking about, you know, color and how you set up your tent and right. the gear you have on board and that sort of thing. So um, so now you've got some other stuff going on, Howard. You were just showing me on your website. So tell me about that, what's happening with this uh, virtual boat building or whatever you call it. Give oh, us good. And scoop well, on thanks, that. Thanks for asking. Um, uh, last year was the first year uh, that... Uh, we held the Small Craft Skills Academy, which was, as you know, um, highly successful. Uh, we did a number of them here in Port Townsend. There seems to be this uh, latent desire in the world, and perhaps it's the economy. Uh, I, I don't know what the factors are, but there are a whole bunch of folks out there who are either buying small boats used, things like O'Day 17s and you know little glass boats or used wooden boats, or they're building boats, either from plans or from kits. It's great. Uh, it's really happening. And uh, my experience last year is testimony to this uh, because we floated this idea of the academy out there and they, they sold out completely. Uh, I added dates. Uh, everyone was full and I turned folks away. So um, this year we've changed the academy a little bit, uh, a little bit more than a little bit. Uh, last year it was really my sole effort. Uh, 
born on the hard work of some volunteers, uh, which uh, was great. Um, this year, John Wellsford, the designer, and David Nichols, who's a, an instructor, author, and small craft designer, and myself have incorporated, uh, they're now partners in the Small Craft Skills Academy. And the reason for doing that uh, is, is really sound. Uh, John ended up last year uh, facilitating an academy with me. Uh, our, we've known each other for years, and our change is that we still are offering a number of on-water, in-classroom, face-to-face uh, skills academies where people can come and learn seamanship and how to self-rescue a boat, navigation, how to read tides and currents. But we're doing something that's quite unique. And as uh, Dave Nichols puts it, we're sort of on the bleeding edge of technology. We're offering interactive online uh, classroom and on-boat, on-water courses. But most importantly, we're offering online interactive boat-building courses and skills courses. And so if I can do just a quick snippet of how that might work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dan would uh, elect to want to build a stitch and glue boat. And so he goes to our website and signs up for the nine-day BYOB, Build Your Own Boat. We'll be building a stitch and glue boat in a boat shop in the Great Lakes. And we will be supplying you with a camera. And you need to have internet technology at your home. You need to be able to have that camera in your garage Um, And at 8 o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning, we begin. And all the builders in their homes, shops, will click on. And there will be, we will be in the shop building with you virtually. We're building the boat. You're building the boat. And as you run into a snag or a question, you just simply point your camera at that spot, ask the question of the instructor. We answer. If it requires a little more of a deliberative answer, uh, we will be taking breaks through the day. Uh, We'll get back with you that way. So at the end of the 10-day build, you've built a boat, and we built a boat at the same time. So so I'm in my garage, and I've got the kit there, and am I viewing your shop on my computer? Is that what I'm doing? That's correct. And you've got a camera on my shop, That's basically. correct. Okay. That's correct. And then at a certain point, uh, the camera that you now own as part of uh, your uh, enrolling for the course, you can simply pick up the tri- small tripod. It's a very small camera, and it's a webcam, and you simply point it at that particular spot on your boat, whatever that might be, and then you ask your question, and we can see it. And we've, we've set up this technology, um, invested in it, so we know that it works. And uh, the online programs are all listed on our new website. Uh, we start in June, and we're doing uh, more classroom in the beginning. We're doing some short two-hour courses and how to set up and cruise in an open dinghy and navigation courses, how to prepare and make a fillet, how to, how to use epoxy, um, and those kinds of things. And then we go into the first boat build, uh, the interactive boat build. Um, This also allows us to stream live from onboard small boats by setting up a number of Hero 3 black cameras that stream back to our central unit. And so I can be out teaching skills on the water and you could be sitting in your den watching this. So it's, it's a little bit of a radical approach, but it seems the world is going that way and, and we're changing to meet the abilities of those folks who have internet technology and hookup. Right. So if I live down in Tennessee and I want to build a, a scam mm. uh, and I can't really afford to come up here and spend two weeks in Port Townsend or go to the Great Lakes, then I could sign up for your class and I would get the camera and I could do a two-week build in my garage interactively over video, basically. Correct. Yeah. Correct. You'll be able to, um, in the case of a scamp, uh, you'll be able to uh, sign up for a preparing to build scamp from plans, preparing to build scamp from a kit, and then approximately three weeks later, the scamp build begins. So those people who prepared uh, through the short preparation course are, you're standing in your garage and there are theoretically 10 other people or nine other people around the country who are ready at that moment and then we have a scamp in our studio a kit and we all begin to build together and what this really helps you do is if you can't take time away from family or work commitments uh, if you don't have the time to 
uh, or you can't afford the expense of traveling for a long distance class and then trailering your boat home. It's right there at home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how do you deal with the time zone factor in that whole thing, Howard? We don't. Uh, That's something we've actually, uh, well, I shouldn't put it that way. We have tried to structure the courses so that no one is getting up at 4 in the morning or working until 10 at night. We've had to strike a happy medium. Yeah. The time differential in the U.S., I believe, is three hours. So uh, we'll start courses mid-morning so someone on the West Coast can actually, they're just going to have to start at 7 Mm -hmm. a.m. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the best we can do. There, we think that there's a potential for folks overseas, but it's really going to have to be something that they'll address in their personal lives. Do they yeah. want to be online at two in the morning? Yeah. And we'll have to see how that goes. Right. Well, there are some people who go, they kind of start their day that early, right? So <laughs> I know, it could especially when pretty... you're jet lagged. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, have you guys come up with any pricing? Can you give us any examples of what this might cost? How is it too soon? Or well, it is too soon. Actually, yeah. all the prices are on our website, which okay. is uh, yeah. smallcraftacademy.com. Uh, I could take a moment and pull it up now, but it's all very affordable. Yeah. Uh, for example, the the uh, bring your own boat build is uh, for having us in your shop for two weeks is $900. Mm -hmm. So that seems to be uh, very, very affordable. Yeah, right. right. But then that builder is going to have to identify the kit that they want to build, and they'll have to have the required materials on hand, epoxy, uh, ancillary wood for cleats, fasteners, that kind of thing, gloves, paper towels. But that comes to them in a packet that we mail out with the camera and we're going to spend a lot of time preparing our students beforehand so that when we start the build on that Saturday morning for example everybody's on par we we it's been confirmed that they have all the materials they need so there's not anyone who has to stop and go gee I forgot the screws or I forgot the paper towels yeah okay so all the supplies are there right yeah so compared to the scamp camp here what does this camp cost for two weeks this camp, I believe, is one thousand nine hundred and seventy-five dollars yeah, for okay. ten days. That's what I was thinking. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, the scamp camp. You know, we will also be offering uh, this build live. So, if someone wants to bring their kit to uh, the boat school that we're working with in Walloon Lake, Michigan, this is where we're starting this summer. If they want to show up there with their scamp kit, I should have mentioned this. We're doing a scamp. Uh, we have a kit that we'll be building online, but if we have three or four other scamps in the studio or in our boat shop, that's perfect. So there's a lot of merit. Uh, arguably, there there's a lot of merit in having an instructor right there with you with your hands and my hands doing a task on the boat. So that's available. If someone wants to come and do the boat bill live, we do that, but we're also streaming it out to folks yeah. in their garages or their shops. Okay. So I guess what I like about the interactive build a bit over the internet is unlike, you know, there's courses you can buy videos for and you can sit and watch a video on how to do something. Right. And that, that can work, but uh, it's a lot different than being interactive, like you're talking about, where you can actually ask questions. You're doing it real time with the people on the other side. So I like that. That's pretty cool, Howard. Well, you know what's great about this, Dan, is... Um when it's time for lunch, you just go into the kitchen and have lunch yeah. at your own home. And at the end of a working session, of a working day during the build, uh, we'll be prompting people to go ahead if you wish. If you want to move ahead and work through the evening on a particular task, uh, we'll be able to help set the stage for that. So then the next morning, you know, perhaps a glue-up is kicked off or you planed something. So it doesn't mean that the builder can only work during the hours we're online they can charge ahead yeah i yeah. see right so will you be aff- offering smaller courses say for somebody that wants to learn how uh, stitching glue method of building a boat or how to do a good fillet or those kind of things can you buy it in smaller pieces absolutely um in fact uh the schedule i was just showing you which is coming out in ad form in this issue coming issue of small craft advisor magazine um, John Wellsford, for example, uh, will be here in August with me teaching a scamp camp, but he's also teaching a how to build a stitch and glue boat in Hamilton, New Zealand, and that's on our schedule. So uh, we also have short courses in filleting, working with epoxy, building in stitch and glue, marlin spike, um, building traditional sails. 
uh, in two courses. So you can learn how to build a, a lug sail, for example. Both Dave Nichols and I are sail makers. I, I do my mm. own sail oh, making really? and design. So uh, when you look at the schedule, you'll see marlin spike courses, sail making, So tell me what Marlin Spike is. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> we were watching Marlin Spike in the shop there. <laughs> we were in there I clamping didn't. Carlins, and yeah. uh, I'm a guy that uses mechanical advantage offered yeah. by line, and it's whipping, tying, tying knots, utilizing line for rigging. Oh, I see. Right. So Marlin Spike skills are one of the great tra- you know traditions of so the sea. So it's for building and for onboard? Well, it's for onboard. I use it. Okay. Uh, in there, as you were seeing, I was utilizing line to apply pressure, clamping to clamp to yeah, clamp, when right. torturing Carlins into place. And yeah. That's a clever way to use a piece of line. Right. But we're really looking at Marlin Spike for use on board boats, how to tie basic knots. We're actually going to teach folks in the, in the introductory class how to tie a rope ladder. Mm-hmm. Because there are a lot of knots that go into that ladder, and that ladder becomes a useful tool. That's not a decorative item. That's a ladder you can roll up, keep in a duffel, drop it over the side of your boat to climb back aboard. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So tell me what's happening with you personally these days, Howard. I know, I know a lot of this is what's <laughs> happening, but any other exciting stuff? Or Well, I have a real job, uh, as you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I will be headed back to... Uh, my home in Micronesia. I'm working uh, still on the World Park Initiative, and that's come to a very, very important point where it's about to pass into law. We've developed and delivered the first uh, four-state strategic development plans based on creating uh, the 1.3 million miles of uh, the Federated States of Micronesia as the first in history World Park. And there's a really strong reason, a number of reasons to do that. We're working to develop a park of sustainability and it will be a swath of the Pacific Ocean approximately the size of two-thirds of the continental United States which will become sort of quote-unquote this special place and it really addresses the pending extinction of uh, the global pelagic fish stock because that area is being uh, tragically overfished. Uh, it will create a sustainable tourism economy in a country that doesn't have any exploitable exports. Tourism is an export, although it doesn't sound like it is. Yeah. Uh, there are so few answers. And so really, that's my real job in life. Yeah. This is my passion. Yeah. And uh, last year, the Academy ran through five months of time frame. But now, with uh, I'm so pleased to be partners with my dear friend, John Wellsford, who I've known for some 25 years. And And with David Nichols, uh, we're going to be able to offer a tremendously uh, personal and meaningful product and service um, in the methods that we've talked about, both live on boats, in people's shops, and live in our shop. Uh, And uh, we'll be doing uh, a shoot from here in Port Townsend in August. We'll be shooting some archival footage and doing some live shots online or interactive courses. Um, so I'm trying to marry these two occupations together, yeah, uh, yeah. which is keeping me hopping. I do a lot of flying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you, how did you first meet John Wellsford? I'm curious. Oh, gosh. Uh, many years ago, uh, I corresponded with him by email, and we have maintained that email exchange through the years, and it was actually, we developed a friendship. Um, he and I have similar interests we yeah. like small boats in particular mm-hmm. yeah. so and yeah. we love wooden boats that's what it's all about yeah so we hit this cord and then three years ago we hooked up here in person for the first time oh really yeah well you Just know he three. lives in the wrong side of the world yeah, I know. he's upside down right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um and it was uh it was fortuitous it was like we had been best friends forever and we've just hit this uh, fabulous friendship uh, that's ongoing and here at the Wooden Boat Festival we co-presented uh, over the last couple of years and evidently it's been very popular our, our, our uh, courses or our presentations are usually packed and I attribute that more to his good looks and, and <laughs> great sense of humor than anything that I have to offer <laughs> so you said great sense of humor well, yeah. you know John <laughs> Oh, yes. He uh, does have a good sense of humor. And Dave Nichols uh, is someone that I've admired for a number of years. Uh, he's a published author. Uh, he's a designer and a builder, and he's been teaching at the Wooden Boat School and the Great Lakes School. And so 
Uh, Dave and I met uh, last year in person for the first time. We'd both known each, about each other for some time, and it was the perfect meeting of three minds that have very, very uh, distinctive skills. I do a lot of, uh, you know, on water uh, cruising, and I build sails, and I build boats, but I do a lot of uh, solo sailing and exploring. John is one of the greatest designers, I think. Just uh, uh, if he hears this, he's getting a very big head. But yeah. I, I truly admire. I have admired his designs for a long time. And David is is a highly skilled technical guy and a boat builder, designer, author. And he brings the video, videography end of this. He brings the technology. Uh, this is his career. So when the three of us all of a sudden scratched our heads and uh, there was a lot of interest in what was going to happen with the Small Craft Skills Academy, and I had a number of folks who wanted to get involved somehow, and this is what came of it. And I, I just couldn't be happier. Oh. Uh, I think uh, the, uh, if I can wax philosophical for a moment, I think the small boat, is, I'm not... I'm singing to your choir here, but yeah. the small boat, in my mind, is one of the best ways that people can recreate themselves in this day and age. Uh, you know, it's at least in the Great Lakes where I spend a little time uh, to get a slip. In a lot of places, you go on a 10 year waiting list uh, yeah. just to get a slip or a mooring, actually, a mooring. And, uh, you know, we live in stressful times. We mm -hmm. live in 10 lane freeways and we walk through big box stores and you put someone's hand on a plane and they just curl up a little shaving, things begin to change. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was uh, deeply moved last year working with the 91 sailors who came to the Small Craft Skills Academy. I, I'll just say this as humbly as I can. I, I had a little tiny piece of changing some people's lives. It was remarkable. Uh, yeah. It hooked me. Yeah. You're hooked on wooden boats. Oh, yeah. I am too, but I'm hooked on what happens to people. Oh, yeah. yeah and the comradeship that's gone on from the scamp camps. Mm -hmm. If anyone out there is thinking about building a scamp, <clears throat> they should think about scamp camp. It's a fantastic way. Or if they can't do that, the online builds are going to be a great opportunity. Yeah. So for somebody listening that doesn't know what a scamp is, I should have started with, tell us real <laughs> quickly what a scamp is, Howard. A scamp... Um, first of all is a word and that word is the small craft advisor magazine project and um, josh colvin uh, who's uh, the publisher of that magazine and his partner craig wagner they see everything in small boats and they came up with this feeling that there was something missing in a very tiny boat a micro cruiser that could do certain things that other boats don't do and so uh, they contacted John Wellsford, and he rendered a drawing um, that just hit it right. Uh, and I think he's a little mystified how he actually did it, but <laughs> it it hit it hit an aesthetic standpoint, which is important. Um, but it hit an aesthetic standpoint that's very unique in this way: the boat has a pram bow like a mirror or a fireball. You know, there's a long history of pram bows, and, and some sailors look at a pram bow and they they might have a little knee-jerk reaction because they, we kind of like pointed objects when they go in the water. But yeah. the pram bow, aesthetically, the scamp, we've seen this happen. People will walk to on the apron of the Maritime Center here, and if you look around, there are gorgeous boats sitting around, and we've watched many people who are either just wandering through town or, or whatever they're coming to take a look they go to the scamp first people tend to put their hands on it there's something about it that's yeah, i don't want to say cute but i don't know what it is it's unique it's it's very unique yeah well my take is if it didn't have the pram bow it would be just another 12 foot boat yeah yeah in a world of 12 foot boats there's yeah. a whole genre of 12 footers that every you know designers have designed for years but the yeah. fact is so the pram bow is not on the boat because it's different it's on there for a very very strong reason and downwave downwind downwave when uh, a brooch or a, a jibe is pending and a potential brooch is pending a pointed bow with a very fine entry uh, on a lot of boats causes a real issue right it's mm -hmm. gonna the hull goes from symmetrical to asymmetrical the boat starts to dig and it'll follow its own track and then you start to oscillate and then there comes the brooch and potential capsize the way that the scamp is built is in in real 
maybe in layman's terms for those who might be listening who are interested in learning about boats, the rest of us might understand it. The boat is very uh, full forward, and that foot out in front is really not needed. In fact, it's a detriment. So when downwind, when scamp is overpowered, for example, and I've sailed it in over 40 knots of wind and jibe, jibe, jibe really? teaching in it, um, it rides up and kind of mushes along, and it doesn't broach. Mm-hmm. It's a very controllable boat downwind. It's mm-hmm. wonderful that way. So the pram bow is um, either people love it or they realize that there's something strange about this boat and then it grows on them. Mm -hmm. I think it's an endearing piece. Yeah. So enough of that. The other parts of the scamp that are really important is that there's a water ballast tank uh, in the bottom of the boat that contains approximately 175 pounds of water. It's a passive fill that you then top off with a a few... uh, baler falls and you end up with a solid block of water under the floor at precisely the place that you want a lead keel for example Mm -hmm. but you don't want a lead keel in a 12 foot boat because how do you move it around or pull it up on the beach or trailer it and in other words you have if you think about it you've got a 175 pound man laying in the bottom of your boat keeping it upright or for the layman when we were kids the inflatable clown that you punch with the sand in the bottom Mm -hmm. it pops right back up the other factor about scamp is it has uh, it's compartmentalized you would have to really damage it in a number of places to compromise the buoyancy it's one of the most buoyant boats that I've seen it's buoyant under the floor it's buoyant under the seats it's buoyant forward it's watertight it has a small cutty cabin and it's set up as a micro cruiser Um, I've uh, designed two different tents for it, which will soon be available through the magazine. And the uh, the concept is the boat, but it's really not done until you have this tent system, Dodger Bimini integrated tent system, so you can go out on Puget Sound and be toasty warm, cooking dinner, uh, bunked up for the night by yourself or with your significant other. And then it becomes the complete boat that it's supposed to be. Yeah, very cool. cool. Uh, As you know, the boat has been overly tested yeah. uh, for capsize. Yeah. We've uh, proven time and again that it's safe and uh, I think four of the six builders that are building here are building because of what they witnessed last fall at the Wooden Boat Festival mm-hmm. where the boat here in Point Hudson Harbor uh, Marina was actually flipped on its side and it popped back up and uh, thousands of people watched that happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cool. So it's 11 feet, 11 inches long and a beam of 5'5"? Five, five? Yes. 5 feet, 5 inches and weighs about 400 pounds without the ballast? Right. It's a home build and yeah. it's, it's somewhere, let's sun. say, 400, 410, something <clears throat> like that. So that's an important... I'm glad you brought that up. That's an important factor. I consider it s- sort of a moderate displacement dinghy. It's not built to be a super light dinghy, although mm-hmm. with the water ballast out, it becomes you know very light. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's meant to be that way. When you step on a scamp, there's no feeling of, whoa, you know, it, it, it hasn't healed over. It's like stepping on a 25-footer. It's yeah. really quite remarkable. And it's got a balanced lug rig that's unstayed. That's unstayed correct. mast. 100 yeah. square feet of sail. Yeah. Very Which controllable. another safety factor, right? An unstayed yeah. mast. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, stays downwind cause big issues. Yeah. When the boom uh, goes Accidental out, jibes and that hits sort of the thing. stay, starts yeah. right up the stay, the sail gets fuller, and all bets are off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very cool. So let's wrap it up here, Howard. I, I, I want to ask you one more sure. thing. No. <laughs> For people listening that are building a wooden boat or considering building a wooden boat, give us just one or two tips that would apply to any wooden boat build. Okay. Boy, that's really a hard question to answer <laughs> you got maybe me. i should have prepped you for that one well you should have to be a big thing just something little that well you let me learned. give it to you let me say it this way um in the in the in the world of choosing a boat to build you can you can choose to build a traditional boat clinker build lap straight carville hull or you can choose to build a modern or a contemporary boat scamp is a contemporary boat meaning that it's uh it's plywood it's marine plywood its fasteners are uh, epoxy and fillet material. It has very few mechanical fasteners in it. The mechanical fasteners in it are really locators to let the glue kick off. So here's the one thing I can say. Instead of a specific tip that will get me in trouble, um, the, the experience of building a traditional boat has uh, 
deep history and meaning and it's a it's a lovely way to go the modern life that we live fast paced a little bit of time points towards the more contemporary build for a lot of people the skill level um, respectfully is needs to be it can be lower uh, mm-hmm. and I reckon if old Nathaniel Hershoff would have had epoxy and plywood we would have seen a whole different world of boats <laughs> because he was cutting edge in his day yeah right, right. and if he would have had those modern materials mm-hmm. I'm sure it would have influenced the way that boats would have been built and uh, I love them both yeah and I own and I've sailed both kinds I've done yeah. more contemporary building than traditional building but mm-hmm. uh, I would say that m- my advice would be uh, look at both uh, styles and, and think about how much time you have and then if you look at building a kid and you say to yourself well it's going to take me 40 hours double or triple that time but enjoy it uh, and try not to look at building a boat like you'd think about eating an elephant not that I'd want to eat an elephant Yeah. Um, take it a little tiny piece at a time and you know, set a small goal and feel great about it and then get on to the next thing and feel great about it work clean clean up uh, your extra epoxy it requires less sanding and enjoy the ride yeah cool very cool what's your contact information one more time Howard your website or however people can get a hold okay. of you okay uh, the website is one word smallcraftacademy.com uh, people can also call the academy at 231 838 8472 and uh, we are putting a forum up on the website so it's going to be an interactive forum where uh, those folks who get on the website can talk directly to John Wellsford or David Nichols or myself not just about academy programs that that's something else but if someone wants if some if someone is putting together a, an open cruising dinghy and they want some advice on how to anchor or how to set up uh, or how to do stowage we'd be tickled to help anyone that's cool. what we do okay very yep. good. Well, I really appreciate your time today, Howard. I know you're busy with the class, but thanks for sitting down and talking to us, and we'll be in touch with you. Well, Dan, it's always great to see you. Okay. Yeah, very thanks, good. Howard. Thank you very much. Okay, take care. Thanks, Howard, for taking the time for the interview. It was really fun to sit down and chat about your new venture. I hope it goes really well for you and Dave and John. And the Scamp is a fabulous boat. I can't wait to start on mine. And I hope to hook up with you here soon. So thanks again. I would appreciate it if you would connect with me via email, dan at hookedonwoodenboats.com. Tell me what you're up to in the wooden boat world. Uh, You're welcome to ask questions if you're thinking about building a boat. Maybe I can give you some ideas on where to start. You can also subscribe to my e-newsletter, hookedonwoodenboats.com forward slash subscribe. You can go to my website, hookedonwoodenboats.com, and leave comments with the show notes each Thursday. You can send me pictures and stories. You could leave me a voicemail. If you go to my website, and on the right-hand side of the home page, there's a little button that says Send Voice Message or Voicemail. Click on that, and you can send me a message directly from your computer, which would be really cool. I love it when people do that. So anyway, connect. Let's hook up and find out what's happening in your world. If you'd like to support me, you can go to hookedonwoodenboats.com slash Amazon. If you make a purchase there, I get paid a small commission. Likewise, if you go to hookedonwoodenboats.com slash JD for Jamestown Distributors, that takes you to their website of marine and boat building supplies. And if you make a purchase, I get paid a little bit there. And by the way, they have a really large selection of boat building and marine supplies. They have great prices, fast shipping. I've purchased products there myself and had very good success. So I would encourage you to check that out. Also on my website, if you go to the homepage and click on the store button, you can buy Hooked on Wooden Boats gear there, mugs, hats, t-shirts, that sort of thing, with the Hooked on Wooden Boats logo. So check that out too. Well, folks, if you're not already in the game, it's time to get in, the wooden boat game, that is, and have some fun with it. I hope you have a great week. Get out on the water, varnish your boat, do something that has to do with wood, because wood is cool. 
Keep the bright side up and the barnacled side down. Wooden boat Dan over and out. Have a great week and God bless.